Hey guys, Jason Tamirk here from Film Skills. Today, I shot a tutorial to show you how to shoot a musical performance with only a couple lights and a few tricks that'll take your videos up to the next level. Now, I get a lot of questions from filmmakers about how to get more clients and how to up your day rate. And one of the things I discuss in my full course at Film Skills is that it's all based on the quality of your demo reel. But if you're just getting started out and you don't have a lot of work to put on your reel, don't worry, because you can always go out and shoot sequences specifically for your reel. So I'm going to reveal my techniques for how to shoot a high quality yet inexpensive music video to showcase your technical and artistic skills. All right. The first thing I needed to do for the shoot was to find an artist. So I put together a casting call on Craigslist and on LACasting.com asking for performers and artists. Well, LA Casting is a free casting service, and it's used by top casting directors in Los Angeles and New York, so serious actors post their resumes, headshots, and demo reels there. Now, if you take a look at some of these people's demo reels, many of them are from student productions, and they're not very good. But that's where you and I come in. See, I propose an exchange of services. So if an actor or performer agrees to work with me on one of my projects, then I'm gonna give them a copy of the final footage to use in their demo reel. So it becomes win-win for everybody involved. But before I sent out the casting notice, I included links to some of my previous work so everyone knew that I was legitimate and that I would respect their time. I also had my location and the shooting date locked, which made it a lot easier for the actors to say yes. Well, once LA Casting approved my casting call, within just a few hours, I had already received dozens of actors interested in my project. Well, I'll be shooting this at LEDGO Studios in Los Angeles, and LEDGO manufactures some pretty cool LED lights, which I use on many of my film skill shoots. So, the day of the shoot arrives. All right, so we have the amazing Tom Bates here to perform for us on camera. And uh, as we're doing our shoot, we're here in Ledgo Studios. And I've got a background here with uh, seamless white paper and a lot of production equipment to kind of add a really neat look to this piece. But before we actually start talking about how to light it, I first want to show you what it would look like if we were to shoot this music video with just an iPhone under the ambient existing fluorescent lights. You've got to admit, the iPhone footage does look pretty flat and amateurish. So instead, I'm going to use my Sony FS5, which has a super 35 millimeter imaging sensor and two lenses. The first is a 35 millimeter, and the second is a 50 millimeter. Both of these are Rokinon Cine DS Prime lenses. Now, you can certainly use a DSLR camera and even the kit lens that came with it. Just remember, it's not about what camera you use, but how you use it. And I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to get the most out of your camera settings just a little bit later. Well, the next step in producing a professional video is to control the lighting. Now, I've got here set up a LEDGO D1200, which is a Fresnel that's set up as our key light. Now, if you take a look at what this light is doing, I have my barn doors pinched closed, so I get a nice shaft of light. That way, I'm able to properly expose Tom's skin tones while letting a lot of the background fall off into shadow. Now, this may be a little too contrasty. So, in order to bring up some of the shadows, I have a second softbox set up to give me a little bit of an ambience. Now, it's very subtle. It's only bringing us up by about a stop and a half, but you can see that the contrast between the bright and the dark sides of Tom's face is a lot more aesthetically pleasing. If you compare this shot now to the iPhone, you can already start to see pretty big difference in the look and the quality of the footage. To add a couple artistic flourishes to the shot, I've got a couple of these LEDGO D1200 MC Fresnels, and I have an orange gel in front of them to give us a little bit of a warmer light. And both of these fixtures are set up on both the left and the right sides of the frame, pointed directly at the camera. And you can see already that it's adding a little bit of color to our shot. One trick I like to use on set is to vary the color of the light sources. And in this case, I'm lighting Tom with a light set at 5600 Kelvin, which is a bluer light. But it appears white because I also set the white balance of my camera to 5600 Kelvin. The accent lights are set at 3200 Kelvin, so they appear much warmer on screen. Well, I decided to go with a warmer color palette because Tom's clothes are on the warmer end of the spectrum. 
to add a little bit more zest to those two accent lights, I'm gonna put two different types of filters in front of the camera lens. The first is a streak filter. And I have here a Tiffin three millimeter streak filter. And the way these work is there's little lines, parallel lines that are grooved into the filter and they'll create a JJ Abrams style lens flare across your frame. And depending on the orientation of the filter, it's gonna control in what direction those flares are going. One thing to watch out for when you're using a streak filter is your focal length. Now, because this filter has groove lines on it, it's easy to see those lines in the light flares on screen. So to smooth those flares out, you've got to slightly lengthen or shorten your focal length until the flares are smooth. See, I made this mistake in another movie that I shot, and you can see here how the streak filter is visible because it wasn't set at just the right focal length. Now, I'm not talking about a big shift in focal length. Only a few millimeters in either direction is going to make a huge difference in smoothing out those flares. I then changed the height of these two accent lights so that the lens flares appeared just above and just below Tom's face, beautifully framing him within the shot. The second filter I'm using is a Tiffin Gold Diffusion FX, one half grade. And this is gonna soften the look just a little bit while also warming it up and giving it an ever so slight golden hue. Now, if you remember, I set up the key lights to 5600 Kelvin, which is a blue color temperature. But I did that specifically knowing that this Tiffin filter was going to warm up some of the skin tones and even make these two accent lights even warmer. You know, just like a lens, before you use any filtration in front of the camera, always take time to make sure it is free of any uh, dust or debris. And in this case, I'm glad I did because my diffusion filter is actually pretty dusty. So um, I blew it off with some compressed air and now I'm using lens tissue just to make sure that it's nice and spotless. Now, one thing to be mindful of is whenever you use filtration in front of the camera lens, make sure that you've got the properly sized donut on the back of your matte box. Because if you get any light from behind the camera, it's going to reflect off of the back of the filter into the camera lens and you'll actually start to see a glare. So be really mindful of that. So in my other lessons, we talked a lot about how the movie frame is a flat frame. And in order for us to create depth, we need to create a foreground as well as a good background with our subject, of course, being the midground. So to make this really cool, I am going to set up a foreground of these LED Christmas lights in order for us to get some really neat little light globes in the foreground. Now, it doesn't have to look pretty in production, but all that matters is what it looks like on the frame. Now that we've got our lighting set up, the next step is to add some camera movement because of course moving the camera within space is gonna give us a lot more production value. So I've got my slider here and it's all set up. It's about a three foot slider. And I'm able to set the motor so that it starts arcing from left to right during the course of the song. It'll be really nice because you'll notice that as the camera moves, it's moving behind these foreground Christmas lights, adding a lot of depth and a really, really cool look to the shot. To record the audio of Tom's performance, I rigged an Audio-Technica shotgun microphone from a boom pole using a shock mount. And by the way, you can see the full list of gear that I'm using at filmskills.com forward slash how to shoot a music video. And by the way, when you join FilmSkills, you'll be eligible to receive exclusive discounts on all of the LEDGO lighting and a ton of other really cool gear. So be sure to check that out. All right, so for this video, I wanted to shoot it in a 2.39 to one aspect ratio. But of course, since my camera is HD and shoots a 16 by nine aspect ratio, I instead set the frame guides on my monitor so that I could properly frame each shot. Well, to achieve a cinematic look, I then recorded the performance in 24 frames per second using a 1 60th of a second shutter speed. And that gave a really nice natural motion blur without feeling too choppy. But had Tom's song been a little bit more intense, I might have used a faster shutter speed, say 1 1 20th of a second for a sharper, more staccato look. I only had a couple hours to shoot this video, so I only used four different camera setups. Well, for the first camera angle, I wanted a wider shot that covered the entire performance. The only glitch was that at the very end of the slider move, the camera would stop, then reverse direction, shaking the camera a little bit. So I knew that I could only use the portions of the shot that happened in the middle of the slider move. The next shot is what I like to call my insurance coverage shot. And for this, I set up the camera on a tripod for a frontal close-up, making sure that every frame was completely usable. That way I knew that I could always cut back to the shot if I didn't properly cover a moment in any of the either three shots. The third camera setup is a frontal three-quarter shot. 
And for this, I moved the two accent lights around so that the visual look of the lens flares was consistent with the front slider shot. I also loosened the tripod head for a more organic feel and let the camera drift and roam a little bit between Tom's face and his guitar. Now, I felt comfortable experimenting with this shot since I knew that I had the entire song covered in my insurance shot. Then the last shot was taken from the other side, but this time in a close-up. So I used my 50 millimeter lens and opened the aperture all the way up to a T1.5 for really nice shallow depth of field. In the shot, the accent light became Tom's key light and I let the camera find some really nice intimate moments. Now one other tip while you're shooting, always keep an eye out for a good opening shot and a good closing shot. So for the opening shot, I wanted to start on the light and then let the camera drift into the scene along the guitar, matching the tranquil opening notes. It's always best for your performer to sing or play to a recording to ensure that their performance is always at the same tempo and speed throughout. And this is gonna make life a lot easier for you when you're cutting the different takes together in the editing room. Well, in this case, we did not have a sync track, so Tom played the song again and again for every take, but every take was a different duration and tempo, so I had to edit both the picture and the audio for every cut, which took a while. All right, guys, so there you have it. A few techniques to shooting a music video in only four camera angles. Now, if you like these tips, I'll take you much deeper into the entire filmmaking process in the paid course at Film Skills Unlimited, where I partnered with over 70 Academy Award and Emmy-winning filmmakers to teach you how to launch your career, write screenplays, cinematography techniques, directing, plus over 300 video tutorials on lighting, editing, producing, and much, much more. I've also negotiated special discounts on software and gear just for Film Skills members. Plus, you can access hundreds of projects and exercises to improve your skills over a thousand pages of my illustrated companion guides, personal mentoring, job shadows, and much more. So check out filmskills.com for more information. And by the way, I even put together a free one hour course to share my top 10 tips for how to make your productions more professional. With that said, let's check out the final music video and a special shout out to Tom Bates, Ledgo Studios, and all of my Film Skills friends. All right guys, see you in the next video. She knows 
Sam.